In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all-new flight controller, actually a stack. But the reason why I really wanted to make this video is because the flight controller is really insane. And I wish more do the same thing. So what we will be covering today is quite a lot. So we're going to be doing advanced breakdown of the ESC as well as the flight controller, which is what is really interesting about this. And towards the end of the video, we're going to be doing the basic setup, guys. So there are timestamps down below, so you can go ahead and skip to whatever part of the video you'd like. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So today we're looking at a stack from JHEMCU. So I've been seeing a lot of their stuff recently. It's like a budget-ish range and they've been out for quite a while. I've seen a couple things maybe within the past three years or two years ago. They've released a couple actually decent things um, into the market, which some people actually spoke pretty highly of. Um, however, in this case today, we're taking a look at their latest stack, which is pretty insane. They're really trying to make a name for themselves. And um, for example, just some quick specs. You have 9 volt, you have Bluetooth, you have dual gyro, and you have some other things, dual camera input, and you could also turn off and on the 9 volt regulator. You also do have a connector for DJI. You could also go analog to, it's, it's insane. It is insane. So we're gonna come back to that in a bit. Let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the things they do provide you. So there's a big telltale sign about the ESC in my opinion here, which is low ESR capacitor is a 2200 microfarad 25 volt. However, first of all, this is kind of wrong in my opinion. I They should have gone for a 35 volt, especially if this is supposed to run 6S and it is supposed to run 6S. So that's something, this will work, but it'll degrade much faster than a 35 volt rated one. And another thing that's this, this capacitor is telling me here that the filtration is pretty terrible. So you're going to need a 2200 microfarad, which is quite a lot. And it should fix um, the noise on this because the amount of filtration here I've already tested. It's basically uh, comparable to the latest one we tested from HiPhone RC. So... Um, it wasn't that great without a low ESR capacitor, so you have to add that low ESR capacitor that is provided or possibly a better one. I'll have some links to some nice ones down below. So yeah, you get the low ESR capacitor. You also do get rubber grommets. You get eight of them for different, uh, you know, firmness and some even some soft and some firm, just uh, basically two sets of them. So you get the red ones and the black ones. The black ones are more stiff. The red ones are just softer, basically. We get four long metal screws here. These are M3 with some metal nuts which is nice to see for some people do like to go the metal route. And they also do provide us with the connector that goes straight into the DJI setup. So if you're gonna be setting this up on DJI, this is to the flight controller and this is right in there, right into the DJI setup and now it actually connect down here. Now on the connector that connects the flight controller to the ESC, as you can tell it says FC ESC. This is very dangerous and, and I, I really don't like seeing this. Um, it's because the motor wiring is in different order and if you were to accidentally flip it, you could fry both of them. So try not to forget and maybe take a picture of this before you actually install it and take note of the colors here because uh, if you mix and match them, these things could burn. So this side goes to the FC, as you can tell right there. And the other side would go to the ESC and then you're gonna be safe. And always double check and confirm that this is correct routing here. So that's something very important to take note of here. I'm glad they did this because if they didn't do this, everybody's gonna be frying their flight controls. Even I would have fried mine because we assumed that they did it properly for us. Now here's also something a little bit interesting to give us a XT60 that's pre-made, but with pretty small gauge wire. I mean, what is that, 16 maybe? So it is pretty small gauge wire compared to this one. They also provide you a 12 gauge. I think this is 16, this is 12 gauge. Um, you're gonna be fine more than likely most of the time with this, but I would recommend shorting it out because this can also introduce noise into the system here. So keep that in mind as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and do the advanced breakdown of the flight controller and uh, let's cover some of its unique properties and features and also its price, which is very, very attractive here. All right guys, so let's go ahead and start off with the flight control here. This is the advanced breakdown part. Oop, and this is the bottom part and this is the top part right here. So this flight controller has so many things going on for it that it's pretty insane. So first of all, let's start with the basics. So we do have a connector and this connector right here is for the DJI setup. And they do provide you with the complete connection to set it up to the bigger uh, proper DJI setup here. Now, again, since it has DJI theoretically, and it should have a nine volt regulator, which it does. And not only that, you can also turn on and off the nine volt whenever you need with an auxiliary switch, which is pretty, pretty crazy, but it doesn't in there. So if we move down here, we see we have these two. We have two gyros as well. We have an ICM and MPU, 6,000 gyros. So you can play around, switch between them. And even though it has a DJI setup, it still keeps the on-screen display here. 
so you'll be able to run analog just fine however speaking of analog here you don't only get one camera input you get two camera inputs that's just out of this world so we'll say 2x camera input which is pretty insane this is camera one right here so if you only had one this is where you'd want to install it right here so we'll just say camera one so again that's pretty insane and it doesn't even end there oh look at that a little barometer oh look at that some more memory look at that the 9 volt and the 5 volt regulator that's just incredible i mean for i wish more 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 companies do this oh yeah we didn't finish yet it's an f7 and we even have inbuilt bluetooth functionality right there that is crazy 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 stuff right here this thing has just about everything you freaking want i mean i can't think of a single thing this thing doesn't have you have the 9 volt regulator for the analog or the dgi you could also turn it on or off and you have a barometer you have a dgi connector with the connections it's just insane and for the esc also you don't even have to use the connector look it's broken out for you in these little pads right here so you can even use these if you want to use a different uh esc so there's so many things going on for it here that it's just pretty insane and also down here this is a little nice addition i wish uh more do this this is a 4.5 volt or they call it 4.5 volt this is where your receiver's 5 volt would go and the reason why they call it 4.5 volts is that it'll allow your receiver to get power when it's connected via usb some flight controllers don't allow that but this allows that to pass through which again is a huge plus so this is an absolute budget winner in my opinion at least in terms of uh in terms of specs and features i haven't i've yet to see anything beat this right now this just has everything there's nothing i could think of that it doesn't have right now but i'm sure some of you will and um yeah that's just pretty insane for the price you're paying here so let's go ahead and jump into the esc part the esc is going to be very quick there isn't really much to talk about the esc it's pretty basic so let's go ahead and jump into the ESC part. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this ESC. So there's two variants in the market right now for this uh, this stack right here. There's a 55 and I think a 45. So we have the 55 amp variant and you also have 45 amp. The only difference is gonna be, I think the FETs more than likely, which are these guys here. Uh, FET size looks pretty reasonable. The type of FETs look okay. Now the filtration here seems to be somewhat minimal. Um, kind of, it, it really almost looks like the Hyphon RC ESC. So you should definitely add that 2000, I think 200 microfarad, 25 volt low ESR capacitor that comes with the package. You want to add them right here. The negative goes here, the positive goes here. And uh, if you didn't know this, this is motor one. So this is the top side. The batteries leads should be in the back of the quadcopter, unless you know what you're doing. So there's motor one, motor two motor three and motor four make sure it's installed like this and that's the camera up there should be if you don't know what you're doing this is how you want to install it now we can also see that all the fets are on one side so all the power deliveries on one side and all the logic is on the other side here now there's a couple things i really don't like like for example this empty space or this empty space um there's a lot of it seems to be like a lot of empty spaces that they could have used to add a bit more filtration here uh, a bit more capacitors for filtration uh, but they didn't seem to go that route here look it's really empty down here you can see how empty i love the design though like it's so clean um but you know I'd, I'd like to see more capacitors on board it'll just make the overall esc much better but then again they give you that low esr capacitor which uh should help in uh, most cases here so again this is a bl heli s esc and uh, it just comes with bl heli s escs now if you're able to find the flight controller and i probably will put a link just to the flight controller itself down below that's what i would highly recommend from the stack and then go with like a iflight sucks xe or more than likely go with a mamba f50 uh, those budget ESC, absolutely phenomenal. I've a noise tested it the other day. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. You're going to be pretty impressed with that shit. It's really, really great. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the beginner setup guide of the flight controller part. So in this part of the video, we're going to go ahead and cover the FPV camera part. Now, what's really interesting again about this flight controller is it could take two cameras at the same time. So if you ever wanted to set that up, you can easily do that. Now let's go ahead and get started here. Let's first start off with the power. So if you're using just for example, one camera, then all we need is the power right here. And we're just gonna just make it a little bit clean here. And we're gonna run it to this pad right there. So don't think it's that pad, it's going to be this one right here. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to do that, but yeah, let's do that. So it's gonna be this one right here. Don't put it right here because that's nine volts right there. You could get away with doing that, but we wanna keep that for the VTX up there. So here we'll call this five volts. 
And if you're doing two cameras, then you just uh, put the wires together and then you solder them there. So we'll just go ahead and close that off right there. So there we go. Next, we need ground. Now we can go to any ground pad, doesn't really matter. But here's one right here for us. Make sure it's that bottom right there. So we're going to go ahead and just route that through. There we go. And same thing for the other one. You would put these guys together. The only difference is going to be, so let's write that down, ground. And the only difference is going to be is the video signal. So if you have just one camera, the place where you want to set that up is going to be right here on this one right here. So this is cam one, also known as the default camera. So we're just going to put cam one right here and camera two is going to be the one above that. So we can go ahead and set that up just like this. There we go. And that would be cam number two. And just like that, you're completely set up. So a lot of people won't install two cameras, but it's really nice to know that you have that option if you wanted to. And, um, and that's really it for this one. So let's go ahead and jump into the next step. Okay, so now we're covering the video transmitter part. Now the video transmitter, the first thing you always need to uh, make sure is the input voltage of your video transmitter because there's two in the market. Again, ones that take five volts only, very important, and ones that take uh, battery voltage. It'll say like seven to 36 or it'll say seven to 24. And we consider those battery voltage VTX is so battery voltage here. So we're going to cover both of the power options first, and then we're going to continue on with the complete setup. So it's really nice with this uh, flight controller is it has both in mind. So it makes it really simple for you. So let's go ahead and start off with the nine volt. We'll start with the nine volt only. So if you wanted to go ahead and do a nine volt only, I always recommend you start out with the power for your video transmitter. So here's the nine volt only option, which is the battery voltage. So we'll also put that on top battery voltage video transmitter here. Now, if you had a five volt video transmitter, then the place where you want to go ahead and grab that from is going to be this one right here, this bottom one right there. So we're just going to run that and we're going to put uh, just right here and we're just going to say the five volts. So if this was a five volt video transmitter, then you want to put the red wire here. If it's a nine volt, you put it right there and you're basically done. That's one of the first things you want to do actually. Next, let's go ahead and cover ground. So the ground wire is going to be, uh, you can go ahead and connect ground to any of these two. So it could either be this one or it could be this one. So it's up to you where you put that. So now we're going to connect our yellow line, which is also called our video line here. So the video line is going to go over here. We're going to pass over and we are going to go right there. Now you might be wondering, well, if we had two cameras, wouldn't we need something else here? Well, actually not because two cameras go in here. There's a switch inside that switches between them. Uh, that allows the output to go to here. So you really don't need it. either if you if you installed one FPV camera or two FPV camera, the video transmitter part is going to be exactly identical. There's no difference there. And last but not least, if you had smart audio or IRC tramp protocol and you wanted to connect that, the place where you want to connect that is going to be under the video line uh, pad. So it's going to be we're just going to do it like this just to make it a little bit simpler. There we go right there. That's where you want to connect that. And just like that, you are basically 100% done with the video transmitter part. Now, never forget to install your antenna before you boot this up or you have a high probability of burning your VTX. If you didn't know that, just a side note. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into the next part of the video now. All right, guys. So in this part of the video, we are going to be covering iBus, SBus, and also the TBS Crossfire, how you would go about connecting this. Now, it's really important to follow along here because then it'll make your life a little bit easier. And I'll explain what that means in a bit here. So first of all, let's start out with the signal wire. So let's start off with SBus here. So SBus should theoretically at these uh, with the way the flight controller is is made should connect to rx2 right here so we're going to call this rx2 rx2 would basically mean the uart2 in the beta flights ports tab and you enable the checkbox for serial rx and that means the serial receiver and that's a checkbox right there so we'll just put it like that and make sure that's all the only thing enabled here now for IBUS, since this is an F7, it's very important, F722, they actually go into the same exact place here. So IBUS and the SBUS signal can go into the exact same place. The only place you'll change, the, the only difference there would be is in the configurations tab under receiver, you choose IBUS instead of SBUS, that's it. And now let's go ahead and cover the uh, TBS crossfire here. Now the TBS crossfire, again, the TX, of the uh, TBS crossfire because it has two would go into the same exact place. And the only difference is going to be is the RX here, which is basically going to go 
right over here. And that's it. You're basically done. Now the power, the power is pretty interesting here because if you take a look at the instruction manual, it says this is, this is 4.5 volts. When all of these take 5 volts. Now why does it say 4.5 volts? Well, 4.5 volt, when it usually says that, it means that when you plug in the USB, it'll actually power up the receivers, which can be very useful when you're binding. You don't have to plug in a battery. You can just plug in a USB and power up the receivers, which is really nice to have. So that's why you always want to put your receiver on the 4.5 volt if you ever see that pad. And that's what that really means here. So here's the 4.5 volts. We can also consider it as 5 volts. So we'll just jump around there. We'll go over and bam. All of them will take that 5 volts from this one right here, whether you're a TBS Crossfire or whether you're iBus. All of them will take it from the same exact position. The last one is going to be ground and it's right next to the... Uh, five volts right there so we can go ahead and just set that up right here might be a little bit difficult to see i'll try to use white here there we go so here we go white maybe looked a little bit better there we go all right and um that's really it that, that's going to cover it for this uh flight controller and i really hope you guys enjoyed the video i really hope you guys learned something today or uh was able to help someone out there and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and everything's linked down below if you can check those out do great support the channel i'll see you guys in the next one peace